Hi everyone! So I have been gaining quite a bit of experience with rare houseplants this year, so I thought perhaps it would be helpful to make a video for you guys about rare houseplants that I feel like are good for beginners, because I know lots of times when we're first getting into plants, we don't want to get into rare plants because they're typically more expensive and we're worried if we're going to kill them. But then as you get more established and more used to taking care of plants, you start thinking about venturing into that rare plant territory. And sometimes you're just left wondering which ones are going to be the best ones to start with. So I'm going to be sharing with you my list today of what I feel like are the best beginner friendly rare house plants. Now, when I say beginner friendly, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, first of all, if you're new here, you may not be aware, but I do not like the word easy when it comes to house plants. I do not like to describe house plants as easy because what's easy for one person may be difficult for another person and vice versa. That's just how it works. And lots of times we are either either an overwaterer or an underwaterer. And that is usually what determines ease of caring for a plant for most people. So since not everybody's an overwaterer and not everybody's an underwaterer, not all plants are always going to be easy for everyone, if that makes sense. So my criteria for picking these plants were I wanted to pick ones that were relatively tough, I guess would be the word. They tend to be able to tolerate lots of different situations and they're kind of just, I guess, non-fussy would be the best way to describe them. So for example, all of the plants I'm gonna be showing you today have done fine in the normal humidity in my home. It has been ranging around this time of year between like probably 35% all the way up to 65 to 70%, but usually we're somewhere in the middle. So maybe like 45% humidity. They've all done fine. They haven't thrown a fit. They aren't getting crispy leaves. You know, they aren't having issues or anything like that. Another one of the criteria I had for picking these plants is did they tolerate the temperatures in my house, which in the windows right now in here, because it's like triple digit heat outside, can get pretty warm. And all of these plants have fared well through all the temperature ranges. Even when I drop my temperature down at night, when I go to sleep, I do drop it down to about 68 in here at that time. Now, the other thing is I do feel like most of these plants can tolerate the occasional underwatering without totally dying on you and can tolerate the occasional overwatering, assuming you do have them in the correct type of soil and the correct size pot. Let's see, I feel like I'm forgetting something here. You know what, let's just go ahead and get into each plant because there are like specific things about each plant that I wanna talk about beyond what I just described that I feel like makes them good rare plants for beginners. So I actually wanna start with a complete category of plants, if you will, and that is what is known as semi-vining philodendrons. So semi-vining philodendrons typically are philodendrons that are a hybrid between an upright philodendron and a vining philodendron. So they will climb, they are vining plants, but they don't really do it very easily. They don't readily want to attach to things. So you do kind of have to help them out with a pole or support or something like that. But these also tend to be your thicker, kind of tougher leafed philodendrons. And I have pulled my philodendron Red Anderson from my collection because it has pushed out one full new leaf since I got it. And that leaf has just recently hardened off and it's gorgeous. And it has now opened another new leaf. So. I absolutely love this plant. This plant to me is pretty tough as nails. It did take a little while to start spreading roots, but it has been spreading them like crazy now. I did just water it yesterday, so it's a little too dark in there probably for you guys to see them, but maybe you can see those red roots spreading around in there. But really I have not had any kind of problems with, and I know I underwatered this one a few times, you guys, but I have not had any kind of problem with it, you know, throwing a fit and the roots getting shriveled up. Now it does have slightly fine roots, but they're not too, too fine. They're not as fine on some of the other plants we're gonna look at. And I think the robustness of roots is an important thing to consider when you're talking about rare plants for beginners because the more robust a root is typically, especially if you're an underwater, the more it's gonna tolerate being underwatered because it's gonna take longer for that root to shrivel up to the point of complete desiccation. And honestly, for the most part, I feel like they can tolerate overwatering too. But once again, the overwatering really is dependent on if you have the right size pot for the plant and if it's in the right soil type. And if you have not seen my soil type video, I will link that in the description below for you to check out later. But definitely has done well in my house. There is that newest leaf that has just hardened off. Love it. I love how it gets a little bit of gray, a little bit of pink, a little bit of red, and the green, some white. I'm excited to see what this new one that's come in 
is gonna look like when it hardens off. They do come in that nice, pretty bright red. But this is only one of very many semi-vining rare philodendrons that you can buy. So Pink Princesses is another semi-vining philodendron, not quite as rare anymore. They are kind of popping up everywhere, but your white princess, your white knight, the whole royal court, as it were, anything that looks like this and is a philodendron is probably a semi-vining philodendron and they've done well for me. Now, the one thing I will say about these, they do have a tendency in my experience, and I'm talking the Red Anderson, the Pink Princesses I have, they do have a tendency to get stuck leaves when the new leaves are coming in. However, and I realize that might be something people are like, mm, beginners don't want to deal with that, but stuck leaves, it just happens, you guys. Normally when you get stuck leaves, lots of times that means the plant's wanting higher humidity, but with these, if they get stuck and you have to unstick them, what I like about these plants versus, for example, Philodendron melanochrysum, Philodendron melanochrysum are not on this list because they tend to be a little bit fussy about opening new leaves. They tend to get stuck very easily. And for that reason, they tend to do better in a controlled humid environment, such as my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. But the thing is, is when they get stuck on a melanochrysum, melanochrysum petioles are actually really thin. They are nowhere near as thick as these petioles are. You can see how thick this is. Even on this new one, it's relatively thick. So the thing is, is lots of times when like on a philodendron melanochrysum, the leaves get stuck, it actually will really quickly just go to completely snapping that new leaf off. And then you've got to wait till another one tries to come in. Because these are so thick on this plant and other semi-vining philodendron, it, I find that they are less likely to snap off if they get stuck. And because these are such tougher leaves, I find that when you help to get them unstuck, the odds of you causing damage to the leaf is minimal. So this newest leaf, actually this leaf too. So the last two leaves did get stuck, but as you can see, there is no damage on this leaf. There is no damage on this leaf. I can't really, I'm probably gonna have to splice in some separate footage here for you to see, but you can see where this last one came in. You can see where the stem was starting to break or the petiole was starting to break, but because I caught it soon enough, because it is so thick, petioled and leafed, I was able to get it unstuck without it breaking off or having any damage. So that's part of the reason that I felt okay still including these plants on the list of plants that I feel like, rare plants that I feel like are good for beginners. Now, if you don't wanna deal with unsticking the leaves, all you need to do probably is put this in a higher humidity environment such as my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. Honestly, everything I have in there right now, you guys, the only thing that's getting stuck leaves in there is philodendron brandy because I can't, I can't keep her happy. I can't keep her happy. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. But yes, so definitely semi-vining philodendrons. If there's a rare one you've had your eye on and you are new to rare plants, definitely a good one for beginners. So we have actually a lot of philodendrons on here, but it's not all philodendrons, I promise you guys. But I do wanna move on to the next three because I feel like these all behave, well actually four, I feel like these all behave very similarly. They all have what I would call medium robustness to their roots. So they're a little bit thicker rooted than this, not too much, but almost identical root structures on these three plants. So the first one I wanna look at is the Philodendron Florida Ghost. Now this is just a baby Philodendron Florida Ghost. I will flash up on screen for you what they look like when they are more mature. But these things grow so fast, you guys. I mean, so fast. This one is actually multiple vines and hopefully you can see the new growth points that are sticking out up in here, like right there. There's about three of them up in there pushing out new growths. They root really, really quickly. They are just amazingly tough as nails when it comes to rare plants. Totally fine, like I said, with the humidity level in my house, I have not had problems with stuck leaves on these at all. And because they have those medium robustness to the roots, once again, I feel like if you slightly underwater on occasion, they're gonna bounce back and overwatering, I don't wanna sound like a broken record, you guys. Just remember, overwatering, the odds of you overwatering any of these plants, if it's in the right size pot with the right type of soil is minimal. But definitely a great houseplant for beginners. Now there is the Philodendron Florida Beauty as well. I have not personally owned one of these or taken care of one even for my inventory that I sell yet. I'm, I'm gonna be trying it out here soon. But I have it on good authority from other people that it's pretty much identical care to this plant. The only big difference you guys need to be aware of between the Florida Ghost and the Florida Beauty is that the white coloring on these Florida Ghost leaves 
This is actually a part of the plant. It's like a genetic part of the plant. And typically the leaves come in and then they kind of change color over time, right? So when it comes to lighting for these plants, I forgot to talk about lighting. I knew I was forgetting something at the start of this video. All of these plants are also very tolerant of a variety of light levels in your house. This plant will get more variegated or hold its variegation better the more light you get it in, but it's also tolerant of lower lighting situations as well, but you might not get as high a variegation. This plant, even if you have it in lower lighting, because this is white that is part of the genetics of this plant, it shouldn't really affect the, var the variegation. And I have found that this plant really does well in pretty much any type of lighting. I have had it just on the island in my kitchen for a while after I potted it up and it was only getting a little bit of sun in the morning from the east windows and a little in the evening from the west windows, which are really far away from it, and it did fine. Now on the Florida Beauty, however, that is not part of the genetics of the plant. That's a different type of variegation. So while it will also tolerate lower light levels, you may find that that variegation is as strong if you have it in a lower light situation. But in general, tough as nails, great rare plant for beginners. Now the next ones I want to talk about, let's go ahead, let's do the philodendron variegated burl marks next. Now I did talk about this in our most recent video as well, about how well these plants have recovered from being imported, and I will discuss rare plants for beginners and importing here in a bit, you guys. But once again, this has a very similar root structure, very similar kind of growth pattern in my experience to that philodendron Florida ghost. This is a climbing philodendron. Eventually you will need to give it a support of some sort. And if you guys do not like this type of variegation, but you kind of like the look and the growth pattern on this plant, there are all green varieties of this plant as well. They're actually usually a, a bit easier to find, at least where I live in person than these are, but this plant has done fabulously for me. I am noticing right now that it does have a little bit of a stuck leaf, and this is the first time I've had that on one of these. I don't know if y'all can see that leaf right there is stuck. Now it does have slightly thinner petioles than on this guy over here, not even slightly, way thinner, but it's still not as delicate as on, for example, a philodendron melanochrysum. So I should fairly easily be able to unstick this, and when you guys are unsticking leaves, couple of things. So you can mist them. Basically you need to wet it down because it makes it easier to slide it out. So either mist it or run a little bit of water over it. And then you can just use your fingernail to gently kind of pull back the petiole sheathing that it's stuck in and gently pull that leaf out. I actually think, give me one second you guys, I think this one actually isn't that stuck. I think it's barely stuck. Let me see if I can get it out of here. All right, you guys, it has been freed. It was barely stuck. I actually think it probably would have pushed itself out on its own, but it is free now. So definitely a very tough as nails plants. Once again, lighting for this one, I feel like you can, it'll be fine in pretty much any level of light. However, because this is not genetic variegation, once again, if you have it in a lower lighting situation, you might start to get more all green leaves versus if you have it in a stronger light situation but definitely a very, very tough, beautiful plant. Now this next plant that we're gonna take a look at is the Philodendron Jose Buono. So once again, very similar root structure from the last two plants that we looked at. However, if you can see here, the petioles on this plant look a lot more like on the Philodendron Red Anderson. And that is because this is an upright Philodendron. So once again, plants that are semi-vining like this are a cross between something like this and something like this, upright and vining. So that's why this has the thicker petioles than those last two we looked at. But because of those thicker petioles, once again, I feel like this plant, if it does get stuck leaves, which honestly, I have not had a problem with stuck leaves on this one, but if it does get stuck leaves, I feel like you're less likely to damage them or snap them off or have them just snap, snap off on their own while you're trying to unstick them or if you forget and don't notice and don't help unstick it, if that makes sense. It is putting out a new leaf right there as you can see and it's not stuck at all it's just slowly pushing its way out but this plant has tolerated humidity in my house just fine light levels just fine once again though because this is a variegated plant if you get this into too low of a level of light odds are you're going to start to lose some of that variegation on this plant i can't remember if this is i don't think it's stable variegation but i think it's a bit more stable than on some of these other plants that we're going to be looking at today i'll check and i'll flash it up on screen for you guys but I find that when people buy these as small plants, hold on you guys, Theo's trying to get at the 
he's trying to get at the tripod. Do not knock the camera over, sir. Lay down. Be good. Be good. Okay, I thought he was going to take a nap while we did this. We played a lot before this, but apparently not enough for his liking. What was I saying? Okay, so yes, uh, I do find when they are smaller like this, sometimes they will have lower variegation, and then as they mature, they will start to push out more variegation. But if you're buying a big one, I would make sure it's already got decent variegation if that's really, if you really want like a high variegated one of these, but definitely an excellent rare house plant for beginners. Okay, let's see. Philodendrons, let's just wrap up the philodendrons. So the next two philodendrons, and this might, might be controversial, not controversial, like might not be popular opinion, I guess is what I should say on these next two as to whether or not they're easy or not. But if you are into velvet leafed houseplants, such as your philodendron micans, which is a more common philodendron that is also very easy to take care of, in my opinion and experience. But a lot of people will say that the velvet leafed rare philodendrons are not good for beginners. I disagree. I actually think that the philodendron splendid and the philodendron glorious are excellent options, especially if you have successfully cared for a philodendron micans. They really aren't that much more difficult. Actually, I actually don't really feel like they're more difficult at all. I actually feel like they behave identically to the philodendron micans. So let's look at the splendid first. I did bring one from my plant inventory out here instead of mine because mine is getting a little too tall to be on screen and Theo has caused some damage on that plant. We'll, we'll, we'll visit that plant here in a future video. But this is one of the ones that I have in inventory to sell. I absolutely love this plant. These leaves are super velvety. They can get quite large. They're not gonna get as big as on the Glorious that we're going to look at next. But these plants have just done fabulous for me. They grow super fast. They root very well. Now they do have finer roots than on any of the other plants that we have looked at so far. So you'd really need to be a little bit more cautious about underwatering, but I've gone a few days too long on mine before and it's bounced back fine. Now these plants will tolerate varying levels of light and because they're not variegated, you don't really have to worry about, you know, losing the appearance of the plant as it were. I really cannot recommend a Splendid enough. Like they're so great. They grow so quickly. They don't care about humidity. They don't get crispy or anything like that. They really are fabulous plants. Now the Philodendron Glorious, set this one aside. And a little backstory here, you guys. Okay, so I did have a Philodendron Melanochrysum in my personal collection. I pretty much determined that it wanted to live in my greenhouse cabinet. I don't want plants on poles in my greenhouse cabinet. I don't have my cabinet set up for plants on poles. And I want my plants on poles out in the open where they can be as tall as they want to be and as big and beautiful as they want to be. So I actually did make the decision to swap out my personal melanochrysum for one of the philodendron glorious that I had in inventory. So I did already sell my melanochrysum to somebody and I took this beautiful plant and added it in to my permanent collection. Absolutely love this plant. So this to me is very similar. It's basically like a climbing version, which by the way is splendid. I think I said that it is a climber, but this is a climbing version, I feel like, of the Philodendron Gloriosum, which is a crawler, but very similar looking. This is actually a hybrid between that plant and a Melanochrysum, I think. And once again, I just find this plant to be super fast growing, super fast rooting. This is one of the first plants that I ordered for inventory. So I ordered this plant back in April, end of April. And it has already spread so many roots around in this pot, you guys. Now they are finer roots, just like on that Splendid, but they root so quickly. They put out leaves super fast. I think this was a three leaf, two leaf, three leaf plant when I got it. Maybe it was these three. It is kind of looking like it's gonna kill off the oldest leaf right here, but that's fine. But it has put out these beautiful new leaves up here, including this one that is just now coming in back here. Sorry, I can't really move that very well. And yeah, so just a excellent, fast growing, very tolerant plant. I have had it in lower light situation in my kitchen. I now have it directly in a west facing window. So it's getting a lot of bright afternoon sun and it has tolerated it just fine. I don't have any problems on the Splendid or the Glorious with stuck leaves. They're just have always been out in the regular humidity in my house, no problem. I really feel like these plants are great options 
Theo is attacking my leg, you guys. I really feel like these plants are great options for beginners to rare plants who want velvety leaves, especially once again, if you have experience with a philodendron micans and you've done fine, I feel confident you will do fine with either of these. If you don't have experience with philodendron micans, maybe get a mycan, see how you do with it. And if you do well, then try one of these next. All right, let's set this one aside. Okay, so Theo has come to hang out with us. Hopefully he's gonna be a good boy back there, but I did just realize that I forgot to mention in the previous grouping of plants, the philodendron ring of fire. This is another very thick leaf plant. It's got thick petioles. It's an upright growth pattern, and it is almost identical in care in my experience to the philodendron Jose Bono. Now I have actually sold out of all of mine. That's why I don't have one to show you in person right now, but an excellent plant for beginners to rare house plants but it is variegated and it is variegation that is gonna be affected by the amount of light you give it. So that is the only caveat I have is that if you wanna maintain that variegation, you are going to have to keep it in brighter light. But other than that, it is tough as nails. So I think those are all of the philodendron. Let me just double check my list, you guys. Yes, those are all the philodendron. So let's talk about Syngonium next. Theo, what are you doing? I feel like he is about to try to attack the Monstera or the power cords from where he is right now. He's got that look in his eyes like he's about to be up to no good, but we'll see what happens. Okay, Syngoniums are what I want to talk about next. And I'm here to tell you guys, Syngoniums, they do fabulously. Every Syngonium I have ever owned has done great. Theo! Okay, sorry about that, you guys. He was trying to chew on the cord to the internet box. But next up, I want to talk about Syngoniums. So pretty much in my experience, rare syngoniums such as this syngonium albo right here perform pretty much the same as your non-rare syngoniums and they do fabulously. They do have a more robust root structure so they are a bit more tolerant of occasional underwaterings. I have all of my non-rare syngoniums living in north facing windows, which is lower light than anywhere else in my house. They've done fine. There are syngoniums with stable variegation. And if you get those, even if you have them in your like lower lighting situations, typically that variegation will remain. Sometimes it might get a little bit less pronounced, but it will come back if you get it into brighter light. Now on an unstably variegated syngonium such as this, you're gonna need to make sure you're getting it into bright light in order to maintain that level of variegation but they grow so fast, you guys. They recover from most anything that I have done to them. Like you can cut them back and they will come back. <laughs> like they are excellent plants and there's just such a huge variety of rare ones and you can get all kinds of colors, whatever color you're into. If you're into pink plants, there's a lot of pink ones. So definitely check out Syngoniums if you're looking at getting into rare plants and there are some of these that look appealing to you because honestly, I. I can't say enough about them. They really perform fabulously. Okay, up next, I do wanna talk about Anthurium. Now, in general, I would not say Anthuriums are for beginners. They can be a little bit tricky, but there are two in particular that I find are more forgiving and less fussy and finicky than a lot of others. And there are a lot of very, very finicky Anthuriums out there, you guys. But the Anthurium Clara, not Clara Nervium, Crystallinum, you guys, is what I want to show you first, if I can get it up over here. So, beautiful, beautiful plant, velvety heart-shaped leaves with that very defined veining. And I am here to tell you, <laughs> these plants uh, got pretty neglected with things that were going on in my life over the last few months. And from for, for some miracle, they did not get dry rotted like the other plants that I neglected and had a problem with. Look at that leaf real quick, you guys. That one is the most beautiful one on this plant. I absolutely love it. Okay, so big, thick, chunky roots, you guys. Big, thick, chunky roots. I don't even know if this is the best one to show you because most of the roots are a little bit hard to see in there, but I will put in some footage here of one that's easier to see. These roots are massive. They are more along the lines of the kind of roots you see on Monstera deliciosus over here. Once again, thicker roots like that tend to tolerate underwatering way better in my experience than thinner roots. However, anthuriums can be a little bit more susceptible than other plants that we've looked at today to over overwatering. And they really do want a thick, thick, chunky soil, you guys. And I think it is best to always have them in an almost root bound state. So even when you're repotting them, barely take them up a pot size. Just barely do it. I find that is one of the best ways to avoid a rot situation on anthuriums. But the Clarinervium, it, I keep saying Clarinervium, we are going to talk about the Clarinervium next. The Crystallinum 
tends to be one of the least fussy. This has never been in my Ikea cabinet. It's not having any kind of brown issues on the leaves or anything like that. It has been with me since, let me look, since, really? I feel like that can't be correct. Where is the time gone this year, you guys? This says I potted this up on 425, which means I probably received it on the 24th or the 23rd of April. And so it has been in my house for a long time. It is doing fabulously. These plants I find do better with a little bit brighter light, but they will tolerate lower light. I just wouldn't put them in lower light situations until they are looking pretty root bound because you're gonna potentially also run a bigger risk of overwatering the plant if it's not in enough light to use up the water quick enough and that soil staying wet for too long. But definitely a tough as nails anthurium in my experience. I have not had much issue on the ones that have put out new leaves. I haven't really had an issue with the leaves. I will caution you, try not to touch your new anthurium leaves. They tend to be a very sensitive to being touched. I have not had issues with them getting stuck or anything like that, but when they aren't fully hardened off, just the oils from your skin and stuff sometimes can cause damage. So that is the one thing I would advise you on is just try, try not to touch them until they're like this. And in reality, I, our plants probably don't really like us touching them all the time, but you know, when they look this pretty and feel that soft, sometimes we just want to touch them. But definitely a great anthurium if you are a beginner looking into getting into anthurium, period, or rare anthuriums. It is becoming a little bit less rare, by the way, you guys, but I still have a hard time finding them in stores in my area. And I definitely have not found the next one in stores in my area, maybe at Cultivar down in Houston, but definitely not around here. So this is the anthurium. Now I want to say crystallite. I'm telling you, why do they both have to start with a C? This is the Anthurium clarinervium. It's very similar looking to this one, just slightly different veining pattern on there, but I have it on good authority from everybody I know who owns these and has owned the one we just looked at as well, that they behave almost identically. So if you just like the pattern of the veining on one of these more than the other, go for the one that you think looks prettier because pretty much same care requirements, same type of behavior. They are really awesome, tough as nails Anthurium. Okay, so this list would not be complete without me mentioning a few Monstera that I feel like are good for beginners to rare plants. And the first one I wanna talk about is the variegated Monstera adansonii. Now, this is what is known as the Indo variety or the Indonesian variety. I find that this thing is so laid back and so easy to take care of. It does have varying levels of variegation. Like I have a bunch of these and not all of them are quite this variegated. This is variegation that is going to require higher light if you want to really get it to pop off. It is getting ready to lose its oldest leaf over here, you guys, but that's just natural leaf loss. Probably was like already getting yellow when I potted it up. And let's see, I've also had this one since 425 or in this pot since 425. Now they do have thicker roots, not as thick as on the anthurium we just looked at, but definitely thicker than any other plant we've looked at today. So definitely super tolerant if you are an underwaterer. Now my personal one of these is li living in my Southern facing windows. It's definitely tolerant of that light. However, I find that it has made it a slightly lighter color somewhere in between the color of this leaf and this leaf. And I know that's just because of the level of light. So if I wanted it to be a little bit darker, I could move it to a window where it's not getting quite as bright of a level of light, but it's happy, it's healthy, it's pumping out new leaves like nobody's business. Like, let me, hold on you guys, I'm looking at it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six leaves on there right now. I have removed, I think one or two leaves since I had it. I have had that one since late January, mid January, somewhere around that, but it has now gotten its root structure like completely established in its pot and it is just pumping out new leaves like nobody's business at a super fast rate. And I just absolutely love the fact that this plant has that slightly more narrow shape, kind of moving more towards like a oblique versus your standard adansonii that you're used to seeing. That is one of the things that I really like about this Indo variety. Now, just because I'm telling you that this Monstera adansonii variegated Indo is good for beginners, does not mean that every Monstera adansonii is good for beginners. They aren't, okay? This one, once again, tough as nails, doesn't care about the humidity level in my house, grows pretty quickly, is good and tolerant of most lighting levels. However, I have heard, I have friends who own the Monstera adansonii albos, and they said they are a nightmare. So unlike with these Syngoniums where I told you any type of Syngonium is pretty easy, these other ones I'm talking about, even if there is a different variety of this plant that has different type of variegation on it, 
not as easy, okay? So just stick to the ones that I'm actually talking about in this video, but this is definitely a tough as nails plant. Okay, I need to grab the other one because I just realized I didn't bring it out here. And so give me one second. Okay guys, so this final plant on our list is one that some of you might not agree with me on, but I am basing this on my own personal experience and this plant has done fabulous for me. Like it has bounced back so quickly from anything and everything that has happened to it. It really just has never skipped a beat and that is the Monstera Thai Constellation. Now, before y'all start coming at me, because I'm sure some of you are gonna disagree with me for having this one on this list, this plant has an interesting history, you guys, and the ones that are on the market today that you're seeing, they are tissue cultured, they were created in a lab, and a lot of you have probably heard people talking about the fact that these plants are really easily prone to root rot, and this is actually a fact. This is not just something that people are saying because there are some that are prone to root rot. Costa Farms was the biggest seller that was preparing to launch all of these for us to buy in our local marketplaces. And they basically have stopped carrying them because they said they're too difficult to care for, which is why some of you are probably like, why are you putting this on this list? I'm putting it on this list because I don't think this one is the same strain of plant as the ones that Costa Farms was releasing and struggling with and everything else. And the reason I say that you guys is because I have not even remotely seen any sign of a root problem in this plant. So here's what the roots look like. Hopefully you can see how big, beautiful, white and robust those roots are. No sign of anything going wrong other than, you know, the fact that this one's trying to grow out of the pot for some unknown reason, but nothing in here looks like it is potentially gonna have any sort of a problem. I am convinced <laughs> that there are multiple types of Thai constellations floating around out there. Like we can call them generation one and generation two if we want to. I've not been able to find a verifiable source for you guys. And you know I like to find solid like academic type sources before I say anything 100% for certain. But I suspect, and I know a lot of other people suspect that there's two generations of these floating around. So I'm guessing maybe this is a second generation one, but all I know is I got this from Airweight Asia. It has done great for me. So if you want one and you've been worried about it having root rot issues because everybody says that and everybody says they're hard to take care of, just order one from Airweight Asia. I do have a discount code with them that you can use to get, I think it's 15% off, I believe. So yeah, it handled shipping fine. It bounced back fine. It has been in regular humidity in my house. I do have it now just kind of hanging out on my coffee table because I don't really have the best place to put it right now, which is pretty far back from my southern facing windows, but it's done fine. Now I will say it is not the fastest grower. So if you want a rapid fire growing plant, this might not be the one for you, but when it comes to this compared to, for example, your Monstera aureas or your Monstera albos, Albos are gonna grow even slower than this, you guys. They tend to be, I think, mine's not super fussy. I mean, it's in regular humidity in my house and it's done fine, but it's just definitely a slower grower. At least this one's given me a new leaf, right? But the albos can be more fussy for some people. The oreas can be really fussy, you guys. I definitely would not recommend that for beginners. I really do think that these are great though, you guys. It, gets completely dry between waterings, it does fine. I probably watered it too soon before when I needed to leave to go out of town. And you know, I was like, well, technically two days from now it's gonna need it, but I'm not gonna be back by then. So I went ahead and watered it. It didn't get root rot as you can see. So I really want you to not be scared of this Thai constellation. I really do think they're good. But once again, I got this from Airroid Asia and I know it's done well. So if there are two generations of plants out there, Airroid Asia seems to have the one that is 2.0 or whatever you want to call it, but definitely an excellent, excellent plant. Okay, now that we've looked at all the plants on the list, I do want to talk about importing rare plants for beginners versus buying them locally in person. If you are a beginner to rare plants and a beginner to importing plants, which typically most of us, if we're importing plants, we're importing rare plants. So if you're a beginner to rare plants, you're going to be a beginner to importing. I would not recommend importing if you don't have experience with it. I would try to find someone you can buy from locally, even if that's just a person who's been propagating their own plant and selling it on Facebook or something like that. However, if you think you want to try importing or you just can't find somebody locally who has one, I do have a video all about how I rehab my imported plants and you can check that out next right here. But thank you for joining me today, you guys. And if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.